Hi, and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing the AM5 harmonic mount from GWO. There are several good reviews of the mount already on YouTube, so after the overview, I plan to focus on real-world testing with heavier telescopes and show guiding results and actual photographs I've taken with the mount. I purchased this mount with my own money, and my opinions are solely my own. Compared to traditional equatorial mounts, the AM5 is incredibly lightweight and extremely portable. I do a lot of outreach events and imaging away from home and really appreciate not having to lug around a 35 pound mount head. It's also quick to set up and quick to tear down. I don't need to use a counterweight at all if I have a small telescope. The performance and guiding have proved to be excellent. It slews quickly and when used with the ASI Air, delivers an overall experience that's tough to beat with small to medium sized telescopes. The AM5 is not suited for heavier telescopes or ones with excessive focal length, but that's clear in the specifications. I actually got great results pushing the mount beyond its stated capabilities, and I'll be showing that to you shortly. The mount comes with a nice carrying case that has foam cutouts for the mount, hand controller, adjustment hex wrenches, and space for an optional counterbalance bar that is not included. The counterweight is also not included. You do also get a test report on the harmonic drive. The AM5 supports both equatorial and alt-as configurations. It has a harmonic drive. This design allows the mount to be small and lightweight for the load it can carry with a higher periodic error than a traditional worm gear mount. But in my experience using the mount, it's fine for visual, and whenever I'm doing astrophotography, I'm guiding anyway, so it's a non-issue. The harmonic drives have got high torque, low weight, and low backlash. The mount has a fixed but circularly distorting ring gear that transmits torque from the inside surface to the outside with almost no backlash. Also tends to have excellent long-term reliability and can support any latitude. The weight is just 5.5 kilograms or 12 pounds. To put that in perspective, it's about one third or less the weight of other popular mounts with the same capacity. It has a high payload with or without a counterweight. Without a counterweight, it can hold 13 kilograms or 28.6 pounds, with a counterweight, 20 kilograms or 44 pounds. I felt more comfortable using a counterweight whenever doing astrophotography, so I put less work on the mount, and I also mitigate the risk of the whole thing tipping over. The mount can be used with small telescopes without a counterweight at all. It operated very well with, for me with a Radian 75 APO and also a Lunt 100 NT without using a counterweight. You'll need to buy a counterweight bar and a weight separately. The maximum supported counterweight is five kilograms or 11 pounds. A nice feature is the dual dovetail with a logo of a telescope that tells you which way to mount your scope. This feature was missing on some other mounts I have used. It has mounting bolts for a finder or ASI air in two separate locations, a three amp output to run your ASI air camera or other device, and you can see the ports on the front. You may wonder why they put a guide port on the mount. Well, it's essential for me. I do a lot of solar work. The mount tracks well on the sun by itself, even though I'm doing a sloppy daytime polar alignment using just my phone pointing north. But to do a two hour solar time lapse, I need to be able to guide on the sun. You can't guide on the sun like you do at night because no other stars are visible. You need a special guiding device like the high node guider. This requires an ST guide port, which the AM5 supports. The mount is ASCOM compatible, so you could use NINA if you wanted to. It has a hand controller. Some reviews of the AM5 say the hand controller isn't very helpful, but I disagree. It's useful for visual use. It's useful for solar imaging to find and center on the sun. It's also helpful to quickly slew to the zenith and you can use a light panel to take flats and also a fast way to turn on or off tracking. And it's great for visual alt as non-astronomy use. The app that is available for the mount 
is fairly basic. It allows you to select the tracking type, sidereal, solar, or lunar, which I use all the time. It's also got a huge database of objects. Once you're polar aligned, you can tap on and go to almost anything you want. In practice though, most people are gonna be using the ASI Air or some other controller. There are other YouTube tutorials that go into much more detail on this app. So I'm not gonna duplicate that here. The AM5 does not come with a tripod, but they offer a nice optional carbon fiber tripod called the TC40. I like this tripod. It's got a maximum capacity of 110 pounds or 50 kilograms. It's lightweight, just weighs five pounds. So the tripod itself is light, strong, and includes a fabric weight bag to hold up to 20 kilograms of weight for additional stability. Putting weight in the bag significantly improves your stability. I like putting a kettlebell there of about 25 pounds. It is a bit short compared to other AP tripods with a maximum height of about 950 millimeters. This gives it a lower center of gravity for astrophotography. But if you're using it for visual, you may have to stoop over, especially if you have a refractor pointing at the zenith. It does not include a carrying bag, which I ended up buying separately through Amazon that holds the tripod and the PE200 attached to it, which is how I like to keep it all the time. The peer extension PE200 is nice and solid. I recommend it highly over the prior version, which had three thin vertical bars and wasn't nearly as stable. The PE200 can be stacked twice for more zenith reach with refractors, but ZWO recommends against it as it raises the center of gravity and does affect stability. Let's talk about the performance of the AM5. First of all, it's important to balance your scope properly on the mount. You can see here I'm using a pencil to check the balance on my schmidt cassegrain grain telescope. Precise polar alignment requires PC software like SharpCap or Nina, or else using the ASI Air. I use the ASI Air and I can polar align quickly. Their guideline is a maximum focal length of 900 millimeters for imaging. For visual, there is no defined limit, except that it depends upon your magnification, which varies with scope designs. When doing solar, I was getting good results at 2800 focal length, but those are of course short exposures. With DSOs, I was also getting good results at over a meter. To get good guiding, you want to balance the scope, use a stable tripod. If you're using their TC40, I would suggest you load up the weight bag with about 25 pounds. This helps a lot in keeping the scope stable. I also would use a counterweight for larger telescopes, which I do with my Tech Refractors and my Celestron C925. So what kind of results did I get? My guiding error was often better than the specification of 0.6 to 0.8 arc seconds. You can see a lot of my examples. I like to use it with the ASI Air. Well, you can see some solar examples here. I ran the telescope at F7, F17.5, and F28 using the high node for solar time lapses. You can see some example photographs and example solar time lapse videos here. With any tripod, there can be issues with hitting the pier using a refractor near the zenith. There are several workarounds. First of all, a pier instead of a tripod. There is a ASI air setting to stop the scope from getting too close to the tripod. Unfortunately, there's no specific guidance available on how to use it. What you could do is get the scope slewed close to the meridian and see how close the bottom of your 
telescope is to the tripod and assess any risk. And then you can set the ASI air such that it will stop guiding when it gets within so many minutes of the meridian, and then it will flip after that. But overall, what are my thoughts? What I like about the AM5 is lightweight, great build quality, extreme portability. It's great for both observational, astrophotography up to about a meter in focal length, solar, lunar, and planetary. It's excellent for small to medium-sized astrophotography rigs. It even does a commendable job on what I would call medium plus setups, like my Tech 160 FL. The Tech 160 fits within the weight limit, but it's a very long telescope with a lot of torque, and the focal length is well beyond the official specification, yet I still got good results. It has very competitive pricing for a harmonic mount. A little more expensive than a traditional worm gear mount, but this, I believe, is more than offset by its advantages in weight, portability, compactness, and ease of use. Really, the only small thing I would complain about is a lack of polar alignment software. In practice, this wasn't an issue for me because I use the ASI Air, and there are lots of other techniques you can use as well. I like the AM5. In fact, I bought two of them, and I think it's a great solution for any telescope up to about one meter in focal length, especially if you plan to be traveling out to dark sites and away doing outreach and not just permanently set up in one location. Thanks for watching.